Well, this week's going to be fun. Hello there, hope you're having a great Monday. What is up guys and welcome to the FPL Today team selection video for game week 37. We have two game weeks left and they're all happening this week. So this is the point where we sprint to that finish line and hopefully get the best ranks we possibly can. So if that's your goal, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell for FPL. And let's get on with the video, which is going to be an altered version because literally I have a day or two between game weeks to get these videos out to you guys. So let's get on with the video. So we start off with how I did in game week 36. Blank game week 36 and I did go into this game week with 13 players that could feature in this game week. But I went with the transfer out of Mendy for McCarthy. This saved me some money to put into the bank and also meant that I was guaranteed to get a playing Southampton keeper and it was McCarthy that did play. However, Southampton, despite having a very good performance against Fulham, couldn't keep the clean sheet, which would have had a massive effect on this pretty low-scoring game week. In defence, we had some decent returns from the likes of Alexander-Arnold and Ali Oski. Alexander-Arnold, of course, getting that cross to Alisson, who scored in the dying minutes to keep Liverpool's Champions League hopes still alive. Ali Oski also coming in with an assist and a clean sheet, and was my joint highest scorer this game week, so thank you, Ali Oski. He was more of a pick just to get on Leeds' good fixtures, and he was budget compared to the likes of Dallas, and it seems to be paying off so far, which is fortunate because I just couldn't afford Dallas, otherwise I probably would have gone to him. And then, of course, Holgate, he was subbed off at half-time in Everton's disappointing performance against Sheffield United. Don't particularly want to talk about that, or Sigurdsson's appearance coming on at half-time for Holgate, and he did nothing either. We also had the news that Jota is now out for the rest of the season, which meant Loughton came in for him on a whole zero points. So all the work I did to make sure I had at least one playing sub made absolutely no difference at all. But then we do get on to Salah, who did get a goal, of course, in the game, which Liverpool managed to win in the dying minutes. He was my captain, so that was 10 points double to 20, which is decent, but I think a lot of people had it on him or Kane. And Kane did get 8 points double to 16 for those that did captain him, so the gain wasn't too great either way. And then we had the likes of Lingard, Bamford and Wood, who all disappointed and failed to impress. And Leeds had a great game, and Bamford just had no part to play in the goals, which was really disappointing. If I'd gone with Rodrigo, which was never likely to happen, Imagine how great a game week this could have been. That meant that we got 53 points with a minus 4 down to 49, but the average was around 36, and around the top 10k it was around the 49 mark anyway. So I probably haven't made much ground on a lot of people in the top 100k, but we do move up slightly from 85,000 odd to about just under 84,000 with 83,950 second place. Hopefully, this puts me in good stead. For the next game week, we are now on a total of 2,294 points, and we're hoping that we planned ahead well enough that we should have a good game week 37 and 38. So we look at the player at risk, and of course it is Diogo Jota who is out for the rest of the season. He did have Burnley away, and to be honest, this far into the season, I'd have probably kept him just in case he could make a difference to my season in the last two game weeks, but now he will be transferred out. Klopp has confirmed he is out injured for the rest of the season and to be honest he has been very disappointing as my third Liverpool player but it does leave me with 7.4 million in the bank to transfer in someone else which we will get onto in the potential transfers or maybe slightly less or more depending on if I take another minus four for game week 37. So we move on to game week 37, and we do have a full 15 players as long as we transfer out Diogo Jota, but of course with rotation the way it currently is, who knows what actually is going to happen. We do have, of course, a Southampton pair in goal, so we know we'll have a fixture against Leeds at home, unless somehow we do get the third choice keeper playing, which would absolutely blow my mind. But anyway, in defence, Alexander-Arnold with Burnley away, Holgate with Wolves at home, hopefully he plays the full 90 minutes in this game, and Alioski with Southampton away. Now, I am tempted to look elsewhere than Holgate, purely because I think a lot of people have Everton players, and Holgate doesn't seem very nailed on. He has not started in the double game week, and then also got substituted off at half-time, so not too keen on Holgate. Also not too keen 
on his teammate Sigurdsson, who only came on at half time. We were hoping for a bit more from him, and we could have had Greenwood instead, which would have been a better transfer overall. And is someone I'm looking to bring in potentially for Diogo Jota now. Fernandez, Salah, and Lingard probably are safe for the rest of the season. Lingard has been disappointing recently, but at this point in the season, I think there's more people that I need to consider getting rid of. Salah has been decent, if not mind blowingly awesome, because He's just not really hit the ground running like we know he can and got a brace or hat trick. And Fernandez back after at least a game week off. Hopefully he gets some game time just to keep him sharp for the Europa League final. However, I do think he will get some rest and rotation, potentially substituted off around the 60 minute marks if Man United are doing well. And to be honest, they've got second place pretty much sewn up. So I, I doubt Fernandez is going to play both all 90 minutes in the next two game weeks. And then up front, we do have Bamford, Kane and Wood. Bamford and Kane both with good fixtures. Southampton away for Bamford and Aston Villa at home for Kane. The captaincy is between Salah and Kane most likely for me, although Fernandez is, of course, an option. And then Wood, Liverpool are conceding goals, so Wood still gets to play because he has been in fantastic form recently. On the bench, we do have Rudiger, who, again, I'm not too sure if he'll play or not because of the Champions League final around the corner. Loughton with Liverpool at home. I think Liverpool will score in this one, which is why he's my last sub. And then, of course, Schotta, who could change to someone from our potential transfers part of this video. And finally, we get onto the potential transfers. And the potential transfers we are looking at include the likes of Greenwood at 7.2 million. I think right now he is on fire, a bit like the end of last season. Unfortunately, this time I didn't get on very early like I had in the 2019-20 season, but he's managed to get five goals and one assist. He's managed an XG of 2.90, and he's also got an XA of 1.57. And as long as he plays, I think he's a fantastic option. But again, with the final in the future, I think he could get rotated. But he's shown in that triple game week that it didn't really matter that he got rotated. He still managed to score in two out of the three games. The ones he started in, he netted in. So... Greenwood, definitely a potential consideration. We're also looking at Ferran Torres, who looked amazing the game we've just gone, getting a hat-trick in the game against Newcastle. 6.9 million, he's managed five goals. Of course, three of them were from that game, with an XG of 2.09, and an XA of 0.66, slightly worse off than Greenwood. But I'm hoping that he might get some significant game time because he might not appear in the Champions League final. And then Willock. I like the idea of bringing in Joe Willock, purely because if he does do really well for me, I can then tell Nim, Brett, and, of course, Ray that I got in Willock, the guy that Arsenal loaned out to Newcastle, and he had a good effect on the end of my season. But he's come on as a super sub. He's playing very well for Newcastle and is very cheap, which would allow me to upgrade elsewhere if I thought that move was necessary. Four goals in the last six game weeks from eight shots on goal, three big chances, and an XG of 2.05, only just lower than Ferran Torres's. And of course, his XA is pretty significantly worse at 0.30, but he does come at such a cheaper price. Anyway, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell for FPL, as well as let me know in the comments down below which differentials you might be considering for this running to the end of the season. With all that being said, I've been JNO. This has been FPL Today. And remember, it's all about the game. Mm -hmm.